Good morning to you from Holy Trinity Gislam. We had a prime minister in the 1950s, late 50s to uh, early 1960s. His name was Harold Macmillan. And um, he made a famous statement. And one of those fam famous statements was this, you've never had it so good. <laughs> and uh, of course, that's on the political side of things again. Yesterday, I spoke about certain political situations. But um, in this country, in that time, uh, the economy was starting to boom and things were looking up for the British people. But things were about to change. Apparently, a, a wage freeze was uh, instituted at that time and it became very unpopular. And then there was a, a terrible scandal in the government with a man called Profumo. And uh, he'd taken up with a prostitute and certain secrets were given, or they thought were given to the Russians at the time of the Cold War. And uh, things began to change in Britain. Things began to decline. People had become complacent. They had come to expect that after the war years, things would improve and continue to improve and get better and better. But uh, I grew up in that era, so I know that uh, that's not what happened. We saw the coming in of the sexual revolution, the drug scene, which I was part of myself um, as a young man. And then things just started to go down the hill. And as we've seen in recent years, especially in the last two and a half, how things have gotten. And um, lies are getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And people are swallowing larger and larger amounts of, of them as time goes on. I was watching the news yesterday. I don't want to discuss Donald Trump again, but uh, the way that they were um, actually twisting the truth. And um, they were bringing up the issue of Liz Cheney, who now apparently has uh, lost her opportunity to, to stand in the, uh, I think it's the primaries, if you Americans can correct me. Um, and of course, the ousting is now being put down to Donald Trump. And so we see more and more lies being told, more and more accusations, and more and more of the West's decline. And um, as we see these lies reigning, as we see things getting worse, so in the church, arguments are beginning to raise again. And um, the issue of tribulation comes into question. Now, of course, um, Many of you will know the stand that I take. I believe that the rapture will come after we've had a certain amount of tribulation. And that is that um, we will see the revealing of the Antichrist. And of course, I know many of you in the comments are going to come back at me with that one. But um, that's not what I want to discuss this morning. I want us to look at the attitude that Jesus had to tribulation. I want us to look at the attitude he wants us to have with regard to our situation now on earth, as we see the Western world declining. Many are starting to doubt the uh, pre-tribulation rapture, I must say this. Many have changed their minds, especially over what they've seen over the last two years. People are starting to feel a little fearful, starting to feel a little uncomfortable, because in the West, to some degree, it has been what Macmillan has said, you've never had it so good. And we in the West don't know what persecution is. We haven't experienced it. So I want to just take a look at the attitude that Jesus wants us to have. And I just want us to look at John. I've got four, five scriptures here. John 17 and verses 14 to 15. Jesus is in the garden of Gethsemane. I have given them thy word. And the world hath hated them. Because they are not of the world even as I am not of the world. I pray that thou shouldst take them, I pray not that thou shouldst take them out of the world, but that thou shouldst keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. This is what we forget when we look at politics. This is what we forget when we look at man. Jesus is saying he will keep us from the evil while we're in it physically. And we shouldn't seek, therefore, to look for an escape. The escape is going to come, yes. 
But Jesus is saying, whenever the rapture takes place, I want you to have the attitude that I will keep you from the evil. What does he mean to keep us from the evil? It doesn't mean that we're immune from being attacked. It doesn't mean that we're immune from being persecuted. Jesus is saying he's there in the midst of it with us. I've written a statement down here. I've said this. By only looking up for the rapture, we are doing a disservice and a dishonor to the Great Commission. Jesus said in John 9 verse 4, I must work the works of him who sent me as long as it is day for the night comes when no man can work. I must work the works, Jesus said. I must. And he gave us that great commission when he sent us out. And he's saying the same thing. You must do the work I give you. And that is the, the work of sharing my word, my truth with people who are immersed in all kinds of of ways of, of looking at the world, whether it's through a political lens or a philosophical lens. God wants us to look through his lens. He wants us to see that as we are sent out into the world. We are his physical hands. He's coming, yes. But he'll come in his time. But in the meantime, he says, I won't take you out of the world physically, but I will keep you from the evil. I've preserved your spirit. I've preserved your soul for my kingdom. Here's another statement. We're not in a prison that we need to break out of. We are in the midst of evil, yet at God's bountiful table. Psalm 23 verse 5 says this. Let's be reminded. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Where does he prepare the table? In the presence of your enemies. Right now we're in the presence of our enemies in America. You've now got Joe Biden. You've now got the evil that is attached to the World Economic Forum, which is spreading across the world. The evil of Davos, the evil of men like Schwab and Harari, these are the beginnings of sorrows. These men are nothing compared to what's going to happen in the end time. As we approach the real end, and as we really begin the tribulation period. Here's another statement. When we have good leadership, as we have had with men like Donald Trump, in many ways we can be deceived into thinking it cannot come to an end. I'll read that again. When we have good leadership, as we had with men like Donald Trump, as an example, in many ways we can be deceived into thinking it cannot come to an end. Because we think, once a man like Macmillan has said you've never had it so good, we just think as human beings, well, it, can't get, it can get better then, can't it? This isn't the pinnacle of how good it's going to get. Here's another statement. God's ways are not ours. False prophets always prophesy prosperity in good times. But God is laying his axe to the root of the tree. I repeat that one. God's ways are not ours. False prophets always prophesy prosperity and good times. But God is laying his axe to the root of the tree. Matthew 3 verse 10. Let's be reminded. And now also the axe is laid under the root, unto the root of the trees. Therefore every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. The words of John the Baptist. It's not just the Jews who are going to suffer in the last days. I hear many, many people speaking, and I'm going to be straight here, who speak about the pre-tribulation rapture. And um, they always say with regard to Matthew 24, but that's all about the Jews. That's all about Israel. That's not for us. We're not going to experience that, are we? Well, let's have a look at Revelation 13, verse 10. What does it say here? He that leadeth, talking of the Antichrist, he that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword 
must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. And that's the word I want to draw attention to today. The saints. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. Who are the saints? The saints are you and me. The saints are you and me who stand with the Jewish people in the end times. That's why Paul wrote Romans 9, 10 and 11. He had a reason for writing it. He wanted the church to understand that in the last days, Jacob's trouble will come. Certainly. And there's going to be a terrible holocaust, worse than the one that we've seen. But Jesus says, the patience and faith of the saints. I came to Christ 50 years ago as a Jew. That makes me a saint. Never mind St. Christopher, St. Michael, St. Jonas, or whoever. I am a saint. You are a saint if you've accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your saviour. We're not warned about these things for nothing. If we were just going to be delivered from everything that was going to happen on the earth, the Lord wouldn't have given us these stern warnings. As he does in the book of Hebrews. As he does in the book of Peter. About turning back. Looking away. Let's not do a disservice to those in communist countries that were persecuted in the, in, in the days gone by. Those that are living in China now, North Korea, Afghanistan. Especially since the, the West under Biden pulled out and left those people to their own devices. We're seeing evil rising like never before. It's across the Western world, not just America, across the whole of the Western world covering the globe and at the same time they shout peace and safety there is no peace and safety let us not be complacent as Christians let us not look to politicians I said it yesterday I'm saying it again I'm emphasizing it look to the Lord Jesus Christ for your deliverance it will come but realize at first we have a job to do We've been left here in the midst of our enemies, in the presence of our enemies. Again, Jesus said he doesn't pray for us to be taken out of the world physically, but he prays that we will be kept from the evil one. However you want to interpret the scripture, we've been given a commission that whenever that rapture takes place, we'll be ready. Let's get prepared Times are going to get tougher. But the Lord is there wanting to always keep us comforted and strengthened. The Holy Spirit, the paraclete, the one who runs beside us, stays close as our comforter. Let's be assured of that and know that the deliverance will come. But at the same time, let's be aware and discerning of what's going on around us. And let's preach the gospel while it is day, for the night is coming when no man can work. No YouTube anymore. No TikTok. No Rumble. No BitChute. No alternative channel to run to. Just the word of God. Maybe not even this physical Bible. But the word hidden in your heart. Look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith as my word today. And to him only, have a blessed day.